grateful. I'm honored. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled and excited all at the same time. Is it possible to be all of that at the same time? Yes. Amen. But thank you, Pastor. God bless you. And I'll give you those $20 I promised you right after the service. <laughs> but always remember this. True friendship. Say true friendship. Yes. Not just any friend. But true friendship is much more valuable than, 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 than anything else. Because money you may run out of, but when you have a true friend, you'll never run out of them. So I want to thank you for your true friendship. Can we give the Lord a praise offering this morning? I have an assignment this morning, and I want to hurry up and get to it. I want you to know that I know this is a word for somebody here because of all the hell that I went through putting this sermon together. It was so, I'm telling you, it was so bad, I wound up uh, uh, cracking my screen on my laptop. It was so, I was not allowed to attack, not emotionally, spiritually, and, and, and so at the end, I rejoiced because this has got to be the word for my assignment for Sunday morning. So I want to talk to you a little bit for the next few minutes, and I'm going to be short. Uh, well, I'm not that short, about five, nine and a half. I could be. I could be shorter. You know, I was talking to Pastor Jerry earlier. We were talking, and Pastor Jerry said I was fat. He did, Linda. He said I was, he didn't say, didn't actually come on and say you're fat. He said it in a very nice way. He said, you know, Pastor, you carry a lot of weight. <laughs> Will somebody give me the interpretation? I am fat, faithful, available, and teachable. Hallelujah. Any fat people in the house, faithful, available, and teachable, stand up if you're fat and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. I don't mean that any disrespect, but I've taught, I've taught that lesson before. God loves fat people. Maybe I'll teach it again. Faithful, available, and teachable fat people. I want you to go with me real quickly now to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So please excuse me today if I don't have my, my outline breakdown. There was no way I could uh, get it on my laptop onto today's lesson. But I want to talk to you today about the right perspective. And we'll go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, please. You have a background for that? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, thank you. Let's start at verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen, earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Turn to your neighbor and say, God gets all the glory. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Thank you, Father, for your presence. And now we thank you for your help to deliver today's assignment that it gets fulfilled in a manner that blesses you and in a manner that glorifies you. And I, pers I thank you that you would entrust me with this assignment to complete it and to deliver it, and I do so with joy, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. My assignment this morning is to relate to you uh, uh, the right or the prosper perspective during challenging times. Look at your neighbor and ask him, do you have the right perspective during challenging times? Ask him. Oh, that, that, that's not very good. Some of you are just sitting there looking at me. Look to the person on your left and ask them, do you have the right attitude when you're going through stuff? Ask them. Now turn to the, person, the joker on the other side and say, oh, are you like me? And you flip out. 
the right perspective during challenging times. I shared with you about people who have a lot of opinions on what the purpose of the church really is. And I shared with you about the brother who had put his guitar uh, 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 in, 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 in the pawn shop. But for some reason, in his mind and in the mind of others, they think that because they give offerings when, that when he needed money that the church was obligated to give him some money. And that shows you how some people think that the purpose of the church is also, for example, not only a bank, but some people think that the purpose of the church is a place for you to display your extraordinary gifts and your talents. Wow. Somebody shout, preach, preach, pastor. That's what a lot of people think. They think church is a place for you to get discovered about how anointed and how gifted you might be. No, we're not a church that's trying to make people think that this is for you to exhibit your gifts. We are here to glorify the true and living God. Oh, help me somebody. We are here to glorify the true and the living God. Somebody say, I got it. So let me begin by telling you that one of the purposes of the church, here we go, is to help prepare you for how to handle challenges in life. Can I get another amen right there? We've got to prepare you on, on, on how to handle the challenges that you'll face in life. And I promise you, look at me, I promise you that you don't have to look far for challenges. You don't have to invite them or, uh, into, to come into your house. It's going to come whether you invite it or not. Yeah, amen. And I wonder if anybody recognizes, like I do, that it seems like the more spiritual I become, the more problematic challenges become in my life. As a matter of fact, I've discovered that the more that I pray, somebody say pray, that the more that I pray, the more the devil tries to raise his head. The more I read, the more he tries to slow me down. The more I try to preach the gospel, he raises up some drama or some situation trying to discourage me during those seasons. And all you need to, uh, all you need is that, uh, 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 that uh, to know, all you need to know is that it goes with the territory. Turn to your name and say, why are you so surprised? It goes with the territory. I don't know uh, uh, how else to say it. it. It goes with the territory. Say that. And it, it should be, uh, and if you weren't, uh, just the mere fact, let me just say uh, this right here. Just the mere fact that, that, that they're going through what you're going through and, and the way that the enemy attacks, I, I, I want you to know that that is a good indication that you're going somewhere. Just the fact that the devil is attacking you is a good indication that you're going somewhere. And because you're going to have an impact on other people's lives, he wants to do everything he can to discourage you and to bring you down. Somebody said, man, that's a good word. And it's under, hear me, it's under this mindset that the Apostle Paul talks to the church in Corinthians. It's a church that, that has matured uh, from its first letter, from 1 Corinthians. Uh, uh, now we're in 2 Corinthians. And in 1 Corinthians, there were pretty jacked up church. There were a carnal church. You, you've read the, uh, uh, the chapter. Uh, go ahead and study 1 Corinthians. They had people in the church doing everything, all kinds of stuff, just a, 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 a little bit like Destiny Community Church. Oh, everybody said, I, you're like, like in jail. I didn't do it. <laughs> Nobody in jail did anything, right? Everybody in jail did. That's how you just looked at me right now. <laughs> Somebody say Amen. But now we're here in 2 Corinthians, and this, this is the second letter 
to the church in Corinth, and they've matured somewhat since Paul wrote to the, uh, the first letter to them. And Paul recognizes, listen, he recognizes that they are facing challenging times. They're seeking to please God and to live for him. And so Paul wants to give them the proper perspective, the right perspective on how to handle the problems they're facing. Now, I know that there's some people here this morning who are going through some challenges in life. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? I know it because the devil hits me first, and then I know what's coming down the pike to you. So I know, I know that you're going through something because I've been through the ringer of late. Uh, can I get an amen for that right, right about here? And, 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 and if it hasn't reached your place yet, let me prepare you so that when it comes, you'll have a proper perspective. See, if you don't have the proper perspective, you might want to quit. Yeah, you, you might want to run out. If, if, if your perspective is not what it needs to be, you might want to quit your job or you might want to quit your marriage. Uh, go on and preach, Pastor. They're not going to say anything. If your perspective is not uh, the proper perspective, you might want to leave the church. You might, you might want to stop serving God. You might want to walk down the wrong road. Oh, they're not hearing you, Pastor. You might want to go and get all lit up. You might want to go and, 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 and never mind. Not this crowd. This crowd doesn't get lit up. It's the Wednesday night crowd that, that gets lit up. Amen. Somebody say, preach on, Pastor. So I, I, I want to take a shot and see if I can help you get the right perspective so, so that when trouble comes, you won't be complaining. When trouble comes, you won't be walking out on your marriage. You won't be quitting your job. You won't be doing things that you will later regret. Paul says here, and I love this, he says in verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now, now here's what he's talking about that God has entrusted inside of us the treasure of the gospel. Hallelujah. Oh, that's great news right there. He has entrusted us. He has deposited in us. He, 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 he's put it in uh, uh, us. To the, in, 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 he's put it into the lives of us as earthen vessels. We are just earthen vessels, and he puts that gospel, he puts it in us. He gave us the gospel and he gave us gifts and he has entrusted the gospel in us. Hallelujah. And he said that the reason, Paul said, the reason God puts it in you is because, hear me now, human beings are the best avenue to be able to dis, uh, display the excellency of the power of Jesus Christ and that it will be of him and not of us. Hallelujah. What are you trying to say, preacher? He's saying, Paul's saying that God put it in us because he wants us to be able to be at a place to recognize that once we give God the glory, hear me, once we give God the glory, we realize that it's not our strength, it's not our abilities, it's not our giftings, not a power, but it is the power that has been entrusted to you and to me that enables us to give God all of the glory and all of the honor. Hallelujah. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Verse 7. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. See, that's, that, that's something to shout about right there. But, but, but here, before you shout, Paul says, let me prepare you for what's going to happen. And he says in verse 8, and he starts to prepare them. Now God's preparing somebody in this house. And it starts in verse 8. We are hard pressed on every side. Look at your neighbor and say, on every side. 
Look at your other neighbor and say, on every side. Point one, we are hard-pressed on every side. The word hard-pressed in the King James, it reads, we are troubled on every side. It means to suffer due to the pressure of circumstances. It means to be oppressed, to be afflicted. It means to be pushed as if you're in a crowd and you're, and you're surrounded and you can't move. That's what it means to be hard pressed. There are a number of us today who are in situations that you feel like you have no way to turn and no place to go. Trouble has got you packed in on every side. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if anybody here recognizes that when trouble comes, it comes in batches. How many of you recognize that? It doesn't come alone. It doesn't come singularly. No, no. When it comes, trouble comes in groups. And it often comes in twos. It comes in threes and in fours and in fives and in, and in sixes. And it looks like when you when you got through with one issue, there's another issue ringing the doorbell. And when, when you're just coming out of some drama, you hear the doorbell and there's another challenge standing. Oh, I know you don't know what I'm talking about. Standing at the door waiting to come in. I wish I, I had someone who knew what I was talking about. Because you're all sitting there like you have no idea what it is to have drama. No, I read your Facebook account. Don't sit there and lie to me. Remember, remember, remember Job. Somebody say Job. Job had his oxen. He, he had stolen. His sheep were consumed by fire. His scammels were stolen by the neighbors. His sons and daughters killed. He was struck with boils literally all over his body. Here's a man who was pressed in, hard pressed on every side. And guess what? Keep living and you'll be hard pressed. You'll pressure, you'll be pressured. There will be pressure in your family, pressure in your marriage, pressure in your faith, in your finances, pressure with your friends, pressure with your future. You're going to have pressure on your job. You're going to have pressure. But, but, but I'm here to tell you that that's a good indication because that indicates that you are headed in the right direction. Get up and give God the glory. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm headed in the right direction. Somebody say, I'm going through hell. But that tells me that I'm headed in the right direction. And all you that are sitting down, you ain't going nowhere. That's why you're sitting down. I tell you, you know, there was nothing better for me than when I had a lousy game in football, messed up, hanging my head, carrying my helmet, going to the locker room, throwing it against the wall, not because we lost, but because I had a lousy game, and there's nothing like somebody, like your coach coming up to you and saying, hey, son, it's all right. You had a bad game today, but the page is about to turn. You'll have a better day tomorrow. How many are ready for a better day? Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise, will you? So point one, we are hard pressed on every side. Let me, let me say this. I don't care how much faith or how holy or how sanctified you are. No area of your life is exempt from satanic attack. But when it comes, many people here this morning are not prepared to handle it. But Paul says, we are hard pressed. Now, now, now I don't want you to focus on that. And I, 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 I don't want you to get discouraged. But, but he says, we are hard pressed. So when he says this, on the rest of that verse, it says, yet not crushed, hallelujah. 
We're hard pressed, okay? But the good news is we're not crushed, glory to God. We're not cramped. We're not in a narrow place where we can't move. You got trouble all around you, but guess what? We are not so pressed in that we don't have a safe place to escape to. We are hard pressed, but we're not crushed. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about Psalms, I'm talking about Psalms 91 that tells us that we can dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Psalm 27 says, the Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 55 says, cast your burdens on the Lord. First Peter 5 says, cast your cares upon the Lord. In other words, we can be hard pressed all around, but Paul is telling you today that we can be hard pressed all around us, but we have a God. We have a God that we can turn to in the midst of all the trouble. We have a, can I get an amen out of somebody? You may feel like you're in a narrow place, but you're not. It may seem like you can't go anywhere, but you're not crushed. You're not crushed. Somebody say, I'm still here. Amen. Come on, say, I'm still here. Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Amen. Yes, I've had every problem in the world. Tell them. But here I am. Giving God the praise. I had challenges all day yesterday, but here I am giving God the praise. If the devil thought that I was going to quit worshiping God uh, uh, based on what he did to me last week, the devil has lost his mind. Tell somebody, I, I took the blow. I took the blow. And I'm still here. If that's you, give a get up and give the Lord a praise. If you took the blow yesterday, you're still here to give him praise. Then give him some praise right about now. I'm still here to praise him. I'm here, still here to magnify him. I'm still here to trust him. I'm still here to call on his name. I'm still here. We, we, we just don't want to, we don't want to make people believe. We don't want to make people believe that when you get saved, that you're going to skip, skip down that yellow brick road. You're going to tiptoe through the, the tulips. Everything is peaches and herb. I mean, peachy keto. No, 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 no. There will be challenges. Uh, uh, let me try this side. I don't know what's wrong with that side. There will be challenges. Can you say amen? And I want you, I want you to highlight this verse in your Bible. And I want you to learn this verse so that when you face hard pressed times, you will recognize I've got a God that I can call on. I got a God, God that I can call on. Oh, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. Oh, you, excuse me, but I, I feel a shout coming out on me. He that, that dwells in the secret place uh, 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 of the most high. I, I love that verse because it lets me know that we have a secret place to go to shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen, you and I have a God that we can talk to and we have a God that we can rush into his Rush into, rush into his presence. Hallelujah. But hold on. <laughs> Paul didn't stop there. No. He said, yes, we're not only hard pressed, but he went on to say, we are perplexed. We are hard pressed on every side, verse 8, yet not crushed, 
we are we are perplexed and the world the, the, the word perplexed means to be without resources to be without resource it means that you don't know what to do you're you're hesitating because you've got issues in life you have questions in your life and decisions to make and you don't know which way to go it means to be in doubt it means to have anxiety to uh, it means to be embarrassed something that happened in your life that brought shame and embarrassed you that's that's what perplexed means. And honestly, there are times that I don't know where to turn next. I'm, I'm perplexed. I, I, I always understand. I, I don't always understand why I am the situation that I'm in. Have you ever been in a place where you didn't know what to do? Thank you, all four of you. The rest of you should be up here preaching. Have you ever been in a place where you just don't know what to do? Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. I've been in a place where I just know, don't know what to do. That means that you're perplexed. You didn't know who to call. That's perplexed. You didn't have any resources to solve the issue. That's perplexed. And Paul says, we are perplexed. And one thing that I've learned from God is this. He does not always give us all the answers in the time frame in which we want them. <laughs> and I've wondered why God would allow us to get into a situation that we don't know what to do. Why would God allow us to get in the types of situations where we have no clue as to what to do? And as I was wondering that, God gave me an answer. And he said this, I've got to let you get to a perplexed place because if you don't go into that perplexed place where you don't know what to do because I need you to learn to depend on me. I need you to learn to depend on my will and not govern your life by your will. Amen, pastor, preach on. Preach on, preacher. Here's what God said. If you've never been in a perplexed situation, you would not know that I am a God who can step in to your worst situation and turn it around and shift it and turn it around. That's why I need you in that perplexed situation. And he said that we're perplexed. And here's something else that's, that I like that Paul said. He said, we are perplexed. <laughs> God, I love this. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. no. See, because I've seen some of you get in perplexed situation and you get very desperate. When people tell you, you know what the Bible, I don't care. No, no, that's dangerous. That is a dangerous place. But you know what God promised you. I don't care. And my friend, hear me. Desperate people always do desperate things. I've seen people quit on God when they're in perplexed situations and it doesn't understand why they're there. I've seen people quit the church. I've seen people quit relationships. I've seen people run out on their marriages because they don't understand why they're in a perplexed situation. I've seen people give up on their kids. I've seen people run from the ministry in a desperate situation. The worst time to make any kind of serious decision like who to quit on and, and who to run from and what job to quit. The worst time to make any of those serious decisions is when you're in despair because you wind up making the wrong decision and sooner or later you'll regret it. Good word, Pastor. How do you know? Been there, done that, bought the T-shirt, 
but now I have a testimony. Hallelujah. Despair means that I'm not, uh, it means that I'm at an utter loss. As a matter of fact, despair means to lose all hope. Nothing is worse in life. Look at me. Nothing is worse in life, worse in life than to lose hope. And I came to tell somebody this morning that, 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 that's here today that's lost some hope, I came to tell you especially that your situation can change. That your body can be healed. That your marriage can be healed. Somebody's lost hope that their child can be turned around, but I've come to tell you that your children are going to get turned around. Your job, you're going to get a job. Your finances, God's going to shift them. I just want to tell somebody that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. I wish I had an amen crowd here this morning. If I had an opportunity to talk to you about your drama, somebody, somebody in your section has already been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, they came out, God fixed it, and now they have a testimony. Listen, you've got to go through it so that you can have a testimony so that you can help somebody. You are not in despair. We are not without hope. He will. Say he will. will. Say God will. will. Say it like you mean it. God will. will. Say it again. God God will heal your body. God can shift your financial drama. He can bring healing to your family situation. He can heal your depression, your way of thinking. He can heal that anger that's destroying your marriage and your relationship. He can heal those habits and those addictions. We have hope in Jesus Christ. I don't care how big the problem is. I don't care how drastic it is. And I don't care if you cried all day long. We serve a God who will, in due season, step into your biggest problems and resolve it and heal it. That's where my confidence is. That's where my trust is. God is able. Say that. Say it again. If you mean it, stand up and say it. I can't hear you. God is able. God is able. I don't care what it looks like. God is able. I don't care what they're saying. God is able. I don't care what I see. God is able. God is able. Give him a praise before you see it. I said give him a praise before you see it. Can you turn me up just a little bit, please? I'm losing my voice up here. God is able. God is able. Can I get somebody this morning to help me thank God? Can somebody help me thank God? Can somebody help me thank God? Can you turn me up, please? Can somebody help me thank God? Thank God, thank God, thank God. Help me thank God. He's able, he'll do it. God is able. Why are you thanking God? Why are you thanking God? Has he got, give me a microphone. Have a microphone. Have a handheld microphone. Why are we thanking God? Why are we thanking God? Because we've been through it. I'm better for it. 
and I know what to do now. I know how to act. I know where to go. I'm a better man for it. That's why I'm thanking God. I've been there before. Somebody around you has already been there, done that, came out, and now has a testimony. Who has a testimony of what God can do? Some of you just ain't gonna admit nothing, huh? You must have. You must have a good lawyer. You're not admitting anything. You're pleading the fifth. I hope it's the empty fifth by now. Somebody say, I've been through it. I'm better for it. And I know what to do now. Because I've been there before. Can we take a praise break right about now? I feel like taking a praise break right about now. Come on. I've been there before. I know what to do. I have all. Come on, somebody help me praise him. I know that not all of you have a dance. I know that all of you don't have a dance. You act like you don't dance, but if the Commodores were up here, you'd be busting a moon. But since the Holy Ghost is up here, you ain't gonna do nothing. Listen, I don't wanna embarrass you. Stand up. Be lazy all day today. I know you don't have a dance. Let me have some music. Run, 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 please run. Let me have some music. Let me have some music. We're missing a keyboard player. Oh, it probably had to work. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Let me have some music. Music, fast pace, fast, 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 fast. Run, 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 run. Where's everybody? Run! Be ready at all times. Come on, help me out. You're my team. Help me. Help me. Give me a fast song. Give me a fast song. Fast. Fast. Come on. If you have a dance, I want you to start dancing. If you have a dance, start dancing. If you have a dance, start dancing. Maybe 
Only you can glorify God but just doing this. You can't even do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak life to the dead people in Jesus' name. I speak life to the dead people in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says the dead cannot praise the Lord. Now give me a song. Great and almighty is our God. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Great and almighty is our God. Great and almighty is our God. Great and almighty is our God. He is full of majesty. just released an onslaught against the spirit of despair. I haven't got to the good part yet. I wish I could stop here, but, but hold on. There's, there's one more thing Paul says. You're not only going to find yourself hard pressed, and you're not going to be only be perplexed, but verse 9 says, we are persecuted. Now, persecuted means that we're being talked about. Oh, you've never been talked about? That's why you dropped off of Facebook, but you went on Instagram. And now, where are you going to go? Because now on Instagram, they're talking about you. Perplex, I'm, uh, persecuted means we're being talked about. 
It means to be hated. It means to be scandalized. It means to be criticized, to be talked about. And you know why they're talking about you? Because you're going somewhere. Hallelujah. You're going somewhere and they're not going anywhere. Now you know what I you know what I discovered when 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 my wife and I took over the ministry and, and we had only 50 people and that was on Easter Sunday. They weren't talking about us then. But when we became pastors of Destiny Community Church. See, some of you have got to learn that when they talk about you, it's a sign. It's a sign that you're anointed. And you've got to learn to let them say whatever they say about you. You've got to learn how to let it roll off your back like the water off a duck. Somebody say quack, quack. Quack, quack. Listen, listen. Listen, you anointed ones. Who am I talking to? Listen, you anointed ones. God, <laughs> God did not call you to track down lies. God spoke that to me one time. He said, son, I didn't call you to track down lies. You know, you know that joker sitting next to you spends more time trying to find out who's gossiping about them than they do in the word. Go ahead, look, look, look up and down your road. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Look up and down your road. See if you can find out who that joker is. Isn't that ridiculous? And instead of journaling when they read the Bible as to what God is quickening to them, they're quick to journal in Facebook trying to get back at people. This is for, this is for you know who. Yeah, I know who, dummy. The, the comment's right above you. Say drama. drama. God did not call you to track down lies. You are not a lie tracker downer. You are not a lie tracker downer. And you've got to get this because people are going to lie on you all the time. But all you've got to do is go to Psalm 63 where it says, Praise me, lift up your hands and give me glory. And at the end of the chapter it says, And I will shut the mouth of the lion. Somebody shout amen. And then, and then, and then he says, "Let me finish. I'm coming in for a landing now. I see, I see the, I see the landing strip." Then, 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 then he says, uh, uh, "Then he says, uh, you may be persecuted, uh, but you are not forsaken." <laughs> and that means that God will never leave us. God will never depart from us. Somebody should have shouted, "Amen." God, he's with us all the time, and God will be with us in the midst of our biggest challenge. Hallelujah. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. It says, it says that we're struck down. Somebody say struck down. That means to get hit and to be knocked back. I'm not going to hit myself hard. Mess up this. You kidding me? Huh? To be struck down means to, to get hit and to be knocked back. How many of you know that we're in a spiritual battle? The devil is working hard to take us out. And to be honest, sometimes he gets in a good punch. Hallelujah. He gets in a good punch. Sometimes he's got some stuff that really hurts. Be careful with these super spiritual people that want you to believe that you're oblivious to these attacks. Liar, 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 pants on fire. 
The truth of the matter is stuff happens in our lives that originated from the pit of hell and it's designed to take us out and knock us down. But here's the great truth. You might knock me down, but I will get back up. Listen, it's just one round. It's just one round. It's not the end of the story. It's a, it's a sliver of my life. And it doesn't, it doesn't determine your future. You got knocked down. But get your booty back up and tell the devil, is that the best you can do? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it says... That we get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. See, some of you act like it's the end of the world. Some of you act like, oh my God. No, it's all right. Get knocked down, but get back up. Because although we get knocked down, we are not destroyed. You got hit, but you're not going to die. You got hit, but you're not defeated. Listen, we have the privilege to go and look at the end of the story. And at the end of the story, we win. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm shouting about. That's why I can shout in the midst of my drama in my life because it's, a, it's hurting today, but the page is going to flip. And by the time I get to the end of the story, I'm going to be more than a conqueror. Isn't that wonderful? We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. All of that is going on. And then Paul closes the chapter. Paul closes the chapter with verse 16. Now, ushers, look at me. Ushers, look at me. I want you to guard those doors carefully because somebody's about to run out of here, overflowing with the joy of the Lord. So I want you to watch those doors very carefully. This is going to bless somebody right here. Verse 16, verse 16, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. And that's what some of you do. First thing you want to do is you want to quit the church. That's the first thing you want to do. I don't know why you would want to do that against God. I have no idea. But that's the first thing people do. They get so in despair. And they forget that although we're struck down, we're not out. And it says, because of that, therefore, we do not lose heart. Yes, I'm hard pressed, but I'm not crushed. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I'm struck down, but I'm not destroyed. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. It sounds like I've got some witnesses here this morning who know what it's like to be crying on the inside, but the Holy Ghost giving you strength on the inside. Tell your neighbor, you're going to make it. Tell them, you're going to make it. Everybody stand up, please. Everybody stand up. Grab your neighbor by the shoulder. Now follow the instructions. Tell them you're going to make it. Thank you. You may be seated. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Who am I preaching to today? You're going to make it. Look at verse 17. For our light affliction. See, the Bible says it's light, and you thought it's the end of the world. Hallelujah. 
If you can't run with men, how are you going to stay up with the horses? Light affliction. Paul is saying that you're going, that what you're going through is light. It's nothing. I, I, I love, there's an oldie from back home called, Ain't no big thing. Da, 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 da. Ain't no big thing. Oh, you haven't, you never heard it? You never have? That's why you're not 66 years old. <laughs> Somebody say, it ain't no big thing. Say it. Say it again. For it is our light affliction. It's a light affliction. You all, you, you see, you all didn't shout there, but maybe, maybe you'll shout here. You'll shout here. For, for it is a, a, a light affliction, which is but for a moment. No, you didn't shout there either. Our light affliction, what you're going through, it's not going to last long. It's already on the way out the door. Hallelujah. The sun is about to shine. You're about to be a winner. This trial is only for a minute. It ain't nothing. Who am I preaching to today? You're frustrated, you're getting weary, you're depressed, you're getting tired, but I've come, I'm assigned to tell you that it's about to be over. It's just for a minute. Can I read one more verse, the last verse? Verse 18. See if you get this. While we do not... Not, say not. not. Look at me, look at me. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. In other words, you've got to learn to look at things that haven't happened yet as if they had already happened. For the things which are seen, that which you can see are temporary. But the things that are not seen are eternal. God is about to shift your circumstances. Listen, listen. We will not be a church who has to wait until the battle is over now we're gonna stand up and give the Lord a shout right now God is about to shift your circumstances but look at me everybody that's standing up you've got to learn to quit Focusing on what you see. That's all you talk about. You're always talking about what it looks like. Well, I see that. Well, it seems as if stop. While we look not at the things which are seen. Well, look at my kids. Well, look at my husband. Look at my wife. Well, look at my marriage. Stop. While we look not at the things which are seen. My marriage was broken up and I caught a hold of this word. I quit looking at my marriage as if it was broken up. I started acting as if my marriage was already healed. My wife and my son were not home yet, but I started talking like they were. I'd go to church and I'd save a chair for my wife. I'd go to a restaurant with the church and I'd, say, I'd save a chair for my wife. Can I sit there? No, my wife's sitting there. I know you're too good and you're too proud to do that I know that's why you're in the situation you're in but I wasn't I had no pride I had already been humbled I had already been broken I had no pride if that's what God said to do then that's what I'm going to do 
And I stop. I stop looking at the things which are seen. Because the things which are seen is temporal. It was only for temporary that my marriage was not healed. But I started to look at the things that I could not see. My marriage, those things are eternal. We're about to celebrate 43 or 44 years. It's been so eternal, I don't know how many years it's been. And I know I'm way over my time, but today I got to finish this. And I don't really care how long it's been. You better learn how to get the right perspective when these challenges come in your life. You better learn that. Some of you are too old in the things of God to keep acting like kids when drama hits. Don't talk to nobody. Don't call nobody. Don't let nobody know. You know better than that. And that's what Paul is telling this church. I know you're trying to please God, but you're going under attack. Let me help you get the right perspective for these attacks. So I'm here to tell you and prophesy over you, lift your hands. That God is about to shift your circumstances. I said God is about to shift your circumstances. Go ahead and tell God thank you. Go ahead. Come on, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank him. Say, God, Lord, thank you. I've got a new attitude, Lord. Hallelujah. I, 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 Lord, this morning I got a new perspective, Lord. I've got a new uh, a view of life. Come on, somebody thank him. Now go ahead and praise his holy name. I'm so thankful for this scripture, but let me tell you, this scripture changed my life, this passage in 2 Corinthians. It changed my life. It changed my attitude. I no longer blame my situation on people. I knew that I was in this situation so that I could learn to lean on God. And some of you are getting angry because you're reaching, you're calling people for help and they're not responding. That's not them. It's God saying, no, don't do it. I'm moving. If you do this, you're not going to help them. Well, I lost some people there, I'm sure. Because people have the wrong idea of what the church should be. And I want to tell you that all of this will only work for you if you're saved. You may be seated. This is the end. All this that I'm preaching about this morning will only <coughs> excuse me. Will only work for you if you're saved. <clears throat> you're not saved this way. I, my voice if you're not saved <clears throat> this won't work for you <clears throat> so the solution, solution would be for you to get saved today won't work for you you must be born again and somebody here is not saved. Somebody here is not born again. Somebody here is not serving Christ. And if you're serious about this change in your life, you ought to come and get saved right now. As a matter of fact, come. I know you're here. You that aren't saved, come now. Come. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Don't listen to anybody. Come now. Come. I know you're here. 
Why would you chance it? See, people in the world think you're pretty smart, but in the church, you're not smart. If you're chancing it one more day, that's a pretty dumb thing to do. Somebody says, well, I'll do it my way. That's fine. But just remember, if you do it your way, the dice is not always going to roll in your favor. And when that dice rolls, you're going to have to roll with it. Seven, eleven, baby. I'm going to ask one more time. If you're not saved, what I've just preached is not going to work for you. Every time you get in a problem, situation, you're going to act like it's the end of the world because that will not work for you. He was talking to brothers in the Lord. The church he was talking to, they were already saved. They were trying to live for God. What about you? So if you're here this morning and you know you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to change your life, one more time, church, as we welcome them, come on up right now and let me pray for you. Come on up right now, right now, right now, and let me pray for you. You're a father, you're a mother, you're a grandfather, you're an uncle, you're a son or a daughter. This is the time to come right now. And let, let's welcome them, church. Let's welcome them by faith. By faith, let's welcome them. God bless you. It's your life. Well, that really is it. It's God's life. It's God's life. Who else will be brave enough to say, me too, pastor. I need Jesus in my life. Come right now. I'm not going to beg you. Come right now. Bring your daughter. Bring your son. Bring whomever you want to bring. This is serious, my friend. This is about you getting your name written in the Lamb's book of life and living for eternity with Jesus Christ. I admire you, son. What's your name? Joseph. Proper name. They, God knew what he was doing when, when you were born because he knew you were going to go through these things, so he named you Joseph that even if your brothers gave you up and threw you in a pit and left you to die, the name Joseph said, God found a way for you to get up and you got into the king's palace. You went from the pit to the palace. From the pit to the palace. And now you've got a, you've got a, pardon me? You went to jail in between? Oh, he would, yeah, 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 but he had a good lawyer. He's out, isn't he? Yeah. And not only is he out, but he's sitting right next to those that accused him and threw him in jail. And only God can do that. Only God, he got light on. His whole family gave up on him. He went to jail. Turn around, turn around. How many of you here have ever been in jail besides the preacher? Look at that. You will. You just got out? It's all right. I've been out for a while. How many of you have ever been in jail? Oh, is that all? Let me ask again. How many of you have ever been in jail? Oh, look, somebody just got saved. Hallelujah. Man, that's scary. I'm not going to ask that question again. There's a lot of people here who have been busted, bro. I appreciate you being honest, man. That's what God's going to do in your life. And it is... It is my responsibility and the responsibility of the faithful ones that are here. The faithful ones. Some think they're too holy to admit that we're ever in jail. They're, they're, they're too sanctified to ever admit they made a mistake. That's right. Got a testimony. A testimony. Hallelujah. 
And so now, we are accountable to you that we make ourselves available to make sure you never go into the pit again, but you stay in the palace. And you are accountable to us that you would come and learn more about what Jesus would do. How's that? Is that fair enough? You're all ready. Stretch your hands this way. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Father, repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I come to ask forgiveness for my sins and to repent of my sins. And I thank you for that forgiveness. And Jesus, I'm going to serve you with all of my heart. I want you to be tattooed on my heart the way I have these tattoos on my body. I want to give you the glory. Thank you for your saving grace and your unconditional love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. See this guy right here? He's going to give you some material that will help you answer some questions. About two or three minutes. That's Pastor Jerry. God bless you, Joseph, man. I look forward to seeing you, bro. Hey, y'all. You play up. Hey, you, you play handball? You play handball? You what? You're Mexican. It's in your blood. I used to be Mexican, but now that I have a job and car insurance, I'm Hispanic. <laughs> I love you, brother. Welcome. Welcome to our church. God bless you. How about that, you holy, holy people that have never made a mistake? Look at what God has done. Hallelujah. Thank you again. Thank you again for your generous giving. And, and, and uh, I love you. I love you so very, very much. Oh, oh, I'm in trouble. I, I, I didn't mean it. I introduced to you my wife, the first lady of this house. Hallelujah. I'm not going to sing. Thank God. <laughs> no, actually, I, I'm, I'm up here because... Um, I know uh, church news is a little faster than Facebook usually, uh, but if you don't know, Pastor John's uh, wife, Betty, went to be with this, the Lord uh, last Wednesday night uh, in the evening around 6 o'clock. Uh, her services are going to be here this Friday at 1 o'clock here in the sanctuary, and then immediately following, we're going to have food and and drinks in the foyer and and uh, we're asking that all of you guys I mean Pastor John is family yeah. Betty was family she still is family and I, I'm asking all of you uh, to please uh, we need food and drinks uh, desserts if you're not a good cook and you want to give somebody some money Lulu don't give me money because I know you can cook you guys know how good Lulu can cook Come Friday, you'll find out. Anyway, we're, I'm really encouraging you to all pitch in uh, whatever you can bring. Uh, who wants to get a list for me? Can somebody do that for me? Maybe we can get some uh, sign-ups. Julie, Julie will uh, do that for us. Julie, can you stand up and show them your book? She's going to get your names right there. So we just need a little organization. So if you could do that for us, we'd really appreciate it. And... Uh, uh, technically, my husband's birthday is Wednesday, right? Are we going to be here? Of course. You going to preach on your birthday? Yeah, you going to preach on your birthday? Then we better have some cake and ice cream, right? Cake and ice cream on your birthday, babe? Cake, ice cream? No, he doesn't like carrot cake. You like carrot cake. He likes uh, lemon. He likes pineapple upside down cake. Tina Pantages isn't here. Ice cream cake from 31 Flavors. So Wednesday we'll have cake and ice cream. Okay, thank you. Um.